In this video we're going to take a quick look at some of the basics of structural analysis for a geodesic dome. Uh, up on screen we've got a typical house on the left and a geodesic dome on the right. It's commonly thought that the geodesic dome would be more complicated uh, but if we take a, a sort of overall look the house um, has a lot more different shapes um, if you were to look at wind direction, if we look at wind load first, uh, north, south, east, west, the typical house would have a different profile in each case, uh, whereas the geodesic dome would have exactly the same profile to the wind. Uh, it's also more aerodynamic, so that would add, obviously is going to help as well. Uh, now, the typical house has a lot of components, some, some straight walls, some angled roof sections, uh, lots of different elements to it whereas the geodesic dome just has two elements it has uh, two triangles of a slightly different shape this actually makes it a far more um, straightforward structure to do some calculations on than the house um, what we've got is a basic spherical triangulated structure uh, and what we'll look at next is some basic principles about how to how triangles um, move force. For this demonstration I'm using uh, on the iPad a program called Force Effect and it gives it it'll give you a very rough idea about um, forces. Let's look at the top force 50 pounds we have coming down this is a roughly um, equilateral triangle and you can see that we've got 29 pounds on each of compression on each top strut and across the bottom we've got 15 pounds of tension. Uh, you can see that at, at the ground level uh, you've got 25 pounds on two feet which makes perfect sense because you've got a 50 pound load shared with two feet it's obvious it's going to be 25 pounds but wait, what m might not be obvious is that we've got 29 pounds of compression and 15 pounds of tension across the bottom of the triangle. If we shrink this triangle and make it a lot lower We've got 50 pounds at the top, uh, but it produces 100 pounds of compression in each top strut and 97 pounds of compression across the bottom. But you still have 25 pounds uh, resting on each foot. This shows that um, as the triangle gets squatter, the forces increase quite dramatically. What we'll look at next is um, the, a, a single force on top of a, a three frequency dome this will be um, and how that plays out with the stresses. Okay we've got a weight uh, right in the center of the very top of this dome. Uh, now the red lines are compression and the blue lines are tension. Uh, as we saw the shallower a triangle is the more um, stress it's under and as it as it goes more upright it's under less stress so if we look at this dome here we can see that if we press right at the very top we've got a high amount of ten tension on, on the top ring uh, and compression right the way to the point but it it get, it wanes off as you go down the dome it gets less and less and less as it goes down the dome let's have a quick look on uh, force effect to see and calculate if we can calculate what this stress is going to be. Okay, I've loaded this into uh, force effect on the iPad, and uh, this is our top pentagon with it. That's a section through it. So what we're looking at is the um, force on the very top of the dome, and the compression in the struts and the tension across the struts. So if we have a look at that there, we've got three. I've got a hundred, a force of a hundred newtons down, and uh, that's given us a compression of uh, three hundred and fifty newtons through here, and a tension across here. See the arrows point out to tension of three forty-seven newtons. So it's about uh, three and a half times uh, the force that's applied to the top of the pentagon. So uh, 
what that causes causes is these blue tension rings to form around the dome and um, if you look at any given strut we'll we'll I'll highlight a couple of struts there now you can see that uh, there is compression and tension on every single strut there's two tensions and and the rest are compression it's three or four depending on what type of strut you have if we uh, load up uh, and have more like a snow load a lot of points what that does is it makes it com oh, makes the whole top compressive but it moves that um, tension line further down the dome so now that there's, there's more tension further down um, than there was before if we go back to a single force in the middle and um, you can see that the the greatest tension and compression is right on that top pentagon um, and the peculiar thing about a domes is if we add more force what it does is it it compresses all of those structures uh, all of those tension ring, that, the, the little tension ring there uh, and it moves the tension ring further down the dome but you can add the same weight that you added to that single um, pentagon to all of the other hubs and it won't create more force than that single hub so if you're if that pentagon um, doesn't break when you put a weight on it you can add that same weight to all of the top uh, hubs and the dome still won't break okay so we've got a rough idea of um, what the dome will hold uh, in weight and um, if we're going to do talk about wind loads it's pre pretty much a wind load is just a weight that's from the side so we're not going to worry about that but what we will talk about next is um, cutting doors in and things uh, when you cut a door in you generally whop it in through a hexagon uh, but as you can see that yellow line crosses um, a tension ring so effectively what you have to do is cut through one of the tension rings this will mean that um, if you didn't have support in where those two yellow lines are the that hexagon would want to slump so the the blue head of the door would want to drop and the two sides would want to open up uh, it's not a big deal but you just have to remember um, to make a proper sound structural door if you want to build that into your dome so those two yellow lines should connect to the ground um, and to the tension rings to stop that any forces moving your dome. Next, if we take a look at um, timber dimensions, uh, I'm often asked um, what you know I'm good, I want to use X size timber as any good. My recommendation would be to use as square a, a, a section as wood as possible. Um, if you're using the bevel frame method that means that obviously you've got to double it so you can go quite thin but uh, if you're using just a simple strut it's best to go for square the reason for that is the reason being if we use um, 6x2 as an example here and we can see that the um, at the top of the dome or near the top of the dome they're relatively vertical but as you go down to the bottom of the dome the, the your 6x2 struts are lying over that one second from the bottom is nearly flat to the ground uh, and that's not structurally sound uh, and the 6x2 is designed to go vertical where the 6 inches is up and the, the 2 inches is across the top and um, so it makes much more sense to use square timber if you're building a dome okay we've got a grasp of the basics uh, so what we want to do now is probably um, make a test jig up you don't really want to build a whole dome to test it with this simple jig you, you just really need to build one hub um, you need a, a flat piece of plywood and you fix three if we're going to do a test a pentagon hub on this one um, you fix three of the uh, legs down um, it doesn't matter how long they are you don't have to do them full length because what we're going to do is test the hub uh, and we worked out that uh, if you have a weight in the center of the dome for example 100 kilograms that the pull force would be 350 kilograms so uh, whatever load you want your dome to take 
you have to uh, pull out on those two handles three and a half times that load uh, and if your strut doesn't your hub sorry doesn't break then you're you're pretty much okay you probably want to go over that a little bit say uh, 400 because you you really need to build in a safety factor once you've done your hub um, you can move on to the struts uh, that's pretty straightforward you just want to place a strut across two supports at the uh, longest strut length and put it in the middle and what you'll also need to do is uh, try and balance your uh, forces that you're using for your hub and your and your struts for example if your struts you need way more force to break them than you do a hub you've got an imbalance in the system and you should really try it and uh, strengthen your hubs or um, take a bit of meat off the uh, strut timber right next we'll have a look at the um, snow load and wind load pages on the JDOME website I'll leave a link in the description uh, just for this example we're going to use a, a snow depth of 50 centimeters on a 6 meter diameter dome uh, and if you look at the, the figures at the bottom of there it says we've got a total snow load of 1130 kilograms which is let's say for argument's sake about a ton and on the um, wind load page we've put in a wind speed of 75 miles an hour you just need to use the boxes and then click calculate here uh, again it's a six meter diameter dome and we're getting a, a total uh, wind load of not far off uh, 800 kilograms uh, so we've got um, with a 50 centimeter snow load we have uh, a ton and uh, with a 75 mile an hour wind load we're just under a ton If we look down on the top of the dome to, to view the main area of snow load um, we can uh, divide up the total snow load which was uh, about a ton between all the uh, hubs um, I'll mark the hubs there now and there's 16 of them so what we have to do is we, we divide the total snow load uh, to get an approximate load for each uh, hub uh, which works out in our case at about uh, just over 60 kilograms we can do exactly the same uh, from a side view to uh, s work out our wind load uh, we've got about 25 hubs across the cross section of a dome so we need to divide uh, 20 I should say we need to divide um, the 800 kilogram wind load by 20 which works out at about 40 kilograms per hub so on our um, little test jigs you're going to need an 80 kilogram weight um, in the middle of a full length of strut and on the um, hub testing jig uh, you're going to need to apply 210 kilograms of force across this um, the hub joint just bear in mind that these calculations are um, approximate and they're only really to give you a, a rough idea about some of the forces acting on a dome uh, okay we'll end up with a, a recap um, and a few tips <laughs>